Almost a year ago, my daughter Harper scared the living daylights out of us. Struggling to breathe, we rushed her to a GP who was fantastic and then to hospital. There, we discovered the scary combination of letters we'd actually never heard of before, RSV. It's a respiratory infection and little Harper was in a lot of pain. Luckily, she was able to make a full recovery. But in just the last 12 months, more than 27,000 Aussie children have suffered from RSV. It happened to us and it could happen to any parent. Yeah, it's awful, absolutely. Now, we're joined in the studio by Chief Paediatrician at the S Sydney Children's Hospital. Thanks so much for your time. Just how common is RSV? It's really common. It's one of these common respiratory infections that happen all year round, but especially in autumn and winter. Mm. And is it something that we're seeing on the rise? We see it on the rise each year at this time of year. So it's not a, an extraordinary year. Mm. We see this and many other respiratory viruses, influenza, paraflu. We're now familiar with all the names because we're doing tests these more, but it's just the usual seasonal pattern that we're seeing. I think the one hard thing for us is just how quickly Harper went downhill. Yeah. Uh, it just it felt like a normal cold or a flu, and then, and then she just went downhill and, and the breathing became laboured. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it got worse and worse in a oh, very, God. very you know, quick amount of time. Yeah, so that's exactly what happens. Most of these viruses just give kids a cold. You know, sneezing, bit of a fever, a bit of a sore throat, feeling unwell. Some of them will go down to their chest and make them cough or wheeze or find it hard to breathe, or young babies will find it hard to feed. And so, while we can prevent these with, you know, some sort of strategies, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, not sending your kids out when they're sick, uh, washing your hands, washing toys, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Most of what it is is managing that illness while your child's got it. So if it's just a cold, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. If they start to have breathing problems, then you think, OK, how bad is it? Have a look at their chest, pull their T-shirt up, have a look. How quickly are they breathing? How much effort are they putting their breathing? If you're a little bit concerned, you can see your GP or call one of the helplines. But if it's really bad, you should go to hospital. Some of the, some of the things here are, I mean, the, the, the elevated heart rate as well just scares the hell out of you. Um, but then it can happen outside of normal hours, so the of GPs course. aren't there. Some GP, we had a fantastic GP, but some GPs aren't, won't be open and also they've got so much on it's hard to get in. Um, so that decision for any parent is hard. Do I take, am I overreacting taking yeah. the bub to, to emergency? We know in Brisbane it's even harder to get into emergency at the moment, stacked with young kids, 30% increase. So, so there are big decisions for parents to make, but yeah, it's yeah. the safest one, isn't it? They're often really hard decisions to make, but I, I would say to a parent, trust your instinct. Mm. If you're really worried, act on that. Go to hospital now or call an ambulance if, if you're extremely concerned. Mm. For things that aren't so bad and you're not quite sure, there's also the national helplines like Health Direct, where you can talk to a nurse and describe what's going on. And in some places they can connect you to health, telehealth as well, where a nurse or a doctor can have a look at what your child looks like and what they're breathing. So, so how do you do that? I so Health Direct is the entry point. You know, that national collateral between the states, you know, is um, just a telephone line. They've got a great website with good information on it as well. You just call up and get advice from a nurse and they'll talk you through what's going on and help you make the decisions about how concerned you should be and where you should need to go and how quickly you should do that. Because mm. I guess the scary thing is the symptoms escalating. I mean, it would have started mm. off with Harper as a bit like cold symptoms mm. and then it got worse. It had happened just last week too. Um, there's something obviously at daycare or whatever and she's mm. picked up something else and she had to go to hospital on Thursday night and there's something else entirely. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it's all similar, but it's just, it just freaks you out. Um, so there's a lot of it around at the moment. And then there is. is this, there this is the seasons yeah. of, you know, snot and colds and cough and wheeze, and this is what we see most years. But for parents, this is the first time. Mm. You know, so it's going, what's their breathing like? How quickly? How much effort? That's it. Anything and if it's really bad, go to hospital. Anything else you can do? Is there anything else you can do? Well, you can prevent these things. Mm. Um, and while there's not a vaccine for many of the viruses that are around, and RSV1 is in development, there are well-established vaccines for influenza and influenza is on the rise. So kids from as young as six months of age, up to five, mm. get that vaccine free. So uptake of that really pretty low. So that's one of the useful things you can do now. You can do it today, you can do it this week. How do you treat it as well? I mean, How do you treat it? Most of the treatment for these things is supportive. Mm. So if they're having problems with their breathing, they might need oxygen. Mm. If they're wheezy with it in kids over a year of age, they might need asthma treatments 
to help open up their airways a bit. But most of the treatment's supportive. And they want their parents, they want comfort, mm. they want cuddles, yeah. they're unsettled, they don't sleep well. That's a big part of the treatment as well, just being there as a parent. For Mainly them. just their mummies. <laughs> oh, Carlos. <laughs> I tried to muscle in, but <laughs> she just want mummy. She just wanted Chaz. <laughs> Really How is she now? She's good? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, she's still... I mean, she's still got I mean, a couple of days later, three yeah. days later, but um, it's just... It, it's constant now. Mm. You, you, you hope that she's overcome the worst of it. Um, and, you know, there's just so much of it in, in daycare mm. and around uh, in society. So, anyway, I think she'll be OK. Really appreciate good the day. information. Yeah, good on you. Exactly. Thank you so much. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... What's my name again? Oh my God. <laughs> Carl. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?